All right, it's gonna be 10, 50 meter sprints all out pretty much. One minute rest in between. See how it goes. I'm probably gonna die at the end of this. All right. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Rasmus over here. Today I'm just going to be talking about high intensity interval training. So I just want to go over it. There's a few things I want to try to get over. Uh, I think uh, there's a lot I can talk about about this topic. I just want to get into the details. Some people on the internet I see they just put out the wrong information. I see a lot of people like especially the people that do fitness and things like that. They always talk about interval training, high intensity interval training and pretty much most of the time they're pretty wrong about it like what they try to believe make you believe is totally far from the truth so uh, basically I'm just gonna talk about what it is why you do it how you do it and pretty much when you do it or when you can op incorporate incorporate it into your training so as somebody who is a pr primarily a sprinter um, I pretty much use uh, high intensity interval training all the time because that's my main source of uh, training. So you you will ma mainly see me do 30 meter sprints, 40 meters, 50 meters, 60 meter sprints for the most most part of the season. Uh, even even with the longest runs I'll do is 150 meter sprints. Getting to 200, 300, 400s in one in one lap, like just one run. That most most sprinters don't do that there are some people that believe that uh, that is a better way to train it gets you faster but there are some drawbacks uh, one of the things that they've uh, found out is that even with 200 meter sprints it's not purely uh, anaerobic it's actually more aerobic than it is anaerobic they found out it's like 60 percent uh, aerobic than it is anaerobic which is a surprise because a lot of people think oh it's a uh, 200 meter that's a prim primarily a sprint that, that is a sprint event but it's actually using more uh, aerobic capacity so basically there is anaerobic and aerobic and the two differences anaerobic is without oxygen and aerobic is with oxygen as the names imply so what that means is that in an anaerobic exercise you're not using oxygen you're using your uh, quick release glucose and that's pretty much let's say you're trying to catch a bus you like you just need that quick energy just to run fast and your uh, anaerobic or your aerobic uh, capacity that's the ones that you need when you're running for a long period of time so let's say you got to run somewhere uh, you know like you got to run to the shops and back again you're going to be using your aerobic capacity so that is like your fat cells and all that whatever um, I'm not going to get into the by bio what is it biochemical stuff whatever but that's pretty much the basic idea so with anaerobic exercises uh, that is where you want to focus when you're doing uh, high intensity interval training or hit training I see a lot of people doing it on online and all that they're always wrong I think I just said that yeah yeah they're always wrong about that and yeah I just want to clear it up uh, with you today so pretty much uh, what is it? What is uh, high intensity interval training? So this uh, high intensity interval training is pretty much aerobic exercises. This involves sprints, stairs, hills, anything that pretty much is pushes your body to the max it can go. And usually when you use up your short quick release energy, it's, it's, a, ve it's a very short period of time. Uh, some people think... Uh, you can get away with like 30 seconds but it's actually even less they've done research where it shows that a 20 meter a 20 30 meter sprint is like using up pretty much all of it the longer you go if it's like 30 seconds 40 seconds then you're tapping into your aerobic capacity so even just a short period of time you uh you lose a lot oh, yeah even even uh, increased in a short period of time you lose a lot um, of what you what you actually want where pretty much it all started was in one mile runners um, the, it, it is famous uh, from Roger Bannister he, he wanted to uh, find a way to access, uh, train for the one mile without um, taking up too much time because usually it was thought where with distance runners that you run continuously for a long period of time but 
he wanted to change it up because he didn't have much time he was going to uni and all that and he wanted to say basically save time uh, so basically his coach was like all right I'll give you um, these short runs you can do and you know d just try to see how you improve so he, he pretty much started it, it worked well with, for him uh, people like uh, Sebastian Coe uh, or Peter Coe his father uh, they pretty much kind of added another uh, step to it where you go all right 200 meters um, sprint and then you do it like a th 20 second warm down I've seen guys do that from top top athletes um, they do like 200 and just jog back to the 200 meter start in this sprint and they always try to keep like a 24 second pace and that's really fast to be honest that's 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 a fast time and that's continuous and that 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 is a high intensity which most people wouldn't be able to reach because it's pretty hard to run 24 seconds flat out and just jog back it's it's not especially a 24 second 200 that's that's a, that's a pretty fast thing so um, as I was saying people like Peter Coe they kind of push that idea um, there, there also comes uh, Tabata as well uh, the, this is when like a lot of these researchers come in and uh, they were trying to look at like what what is like the best form of exercises that you can do and things like that um, with hit, hit, hit cardio or whatever uh, they were just like you know just looking at how it worked and pretty much a lot of those guys they use um, what the stationary bikes the cycling bikes the ones that you pretty much just go in the gym and you cycle and they found out pretty much the same thing where you try to keep that uh, high intensity and you want to you take a short break you do it again and with with like Tabata um, I'm not sure how it's transported it's transformed into like a whole nother s training system where people use pretty much anything the idea is to keep your heart, uh, heart rate at like 140 beats a minute or like a very high 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 level and if it, it drops you pretty much it's, it's pretty much over like that that's one of the difficulties with uh, hit training is that people can't do it for can't do it pretty much because you can't they can't keep keep up that uh, workload and and that's important because the intensity is one of the things that you need to keep like the one as you see uh, I'm doing like 50 50 meter sprints 10 times one minute rest between it's pretty much just a walk back uh, let's say if I increase the distance to 100 meters sure you could say that uh, it's it's gonna be harder but I'm gonna lose the intensity I might be able to do a few like say four or five and then my form is gonna just pretty much collapse uh, I'll be just I'll pretty much be jogging and there's no point into in the actual uh, workout at that exercise at that point so you want to keep that intensity like um, 1050s that's the perfect kind of kind of um, kind of distance and speed that you want to keep up because 50 meters for most sprinters is nothing it's pretty easy to do I could even shorten it down to 30 40 and I could probably even get a high intensity and probably a little bit shorter breaks maybe 45 second uh, and and that would, that would really up the intensity I might try that um, maybe a little bit later but I do notice the benefits f from it just from like um, just from the few runs that I've done afterwards and how my kind of body has adapted to it so one of the things people want to uh, argue is uh, it's more effective than uh, steady state cardio or low intensity steady state cardio this 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 is debatable because there are there are a lot of benefits to high intensity but the thing is that you can't really compare uh, one of the people one of the main arguments they say oh yeah look at these sprinters they're all jacked and all that but that's totally not true because a lot of the sprinters they're not jacked because they're doing high intensity cardio they're jacked because they actually lift weights there's a lot of sprinters that are skinny tiny like Kim Collins um, Adam Jamili, guys like that are tiny. Like, yeah, there's heaps of heaps of them I can name. Oh, what's his name? Christophe Christophe Lemaitre. 
he's it, like a stick uh, I couldn't say boat because he's pretty yeah pretty ripped but like there's a lot of guys that you look at it and you you wouldn't think of him as sprinters Andre the grass is one he's he's a, he's a tiny guy but the thing is that a lot of a lot of the sprinters they they do weights and saying that uh, the low int uh, the high intensity cardio is the reason for it is kind of kind of misguided and they always go oh yeah do you see the marathon runners look how skinny they are they're all emaciated well that's because they're running marathons and you can't you can't carry a lot of muscle on you or pretty much any a lot of weight because that slows you down every kilo is like it, you lose efficient efficiency drastically like you lose a lot of efficiency so that's why you really need the weight and that's one of the myths that that uh, yeah high intensity gives you muscle growth or whatever I'd argue that low intensity will be better for muscle growth because you're not damaging the muscle as much as uh, high intensity is uh, one of the things with sprinters is that you're put, putting a lot of force on, on into the ground and, and you could say that you know your, your joints are getting messed up y you're pushing it so there there is a lot of muscle damage that can be associated with the increased intensity like a lot of bodybuilders to be honest I, I don't think they would do hit because th it's no point um, it would be better just uh, just to do low in low intensity steady state cardio you know and you're pretty much just um, how would I say you're you're pretty much you're pretty much not damaging your muscles as much um, which, which is a lot better for uh, most bodybuilders because you want to build muscle um, and, and it is get to be more quali quality control as you would say uh, for for a bodybuilder because you're building good quality muscle you're not damaging the muscle and you're just focusing on fat loss and that's probably one of the benefits of it anyways hope you guys liked it like subscribe all that good stuff I'll catch you guys next time bye I'm dying.